Oh, oh no, oh no! Oh, I feel a lot better. I didn't touch anything, I swear! Oh! Ty, what did you do? It wasn't my fault! Alright, and for today's edition of Breaking the Internet, this meme has been going around and it has several different forms, several different iterations, and I've heard people making this statement, not necessarily in meme form, just in text. There's been a lot of tweets about it, but since it's such a common argument, I'm going to go ahead and take a look at this one. Let's go ahead and look at this. So, it's one of the gym memes from The Office. And you can see there that it says, but the protesters were destroying property. And then the next slide there is the Boston Tea Party. So basically what it's trying to do is make a comparison between the protests that are going on and people saying, well, the, pro the riots going on now, those are not appropriate because property is being destroyed. And he's saying, well, but they destroyed property in the Boston Tea Party. Now, that is a wildly incorrect comparison for a number of reasons, but we're going to go through really three primary contrasts that make these two incidents, the riots have been going on in the past few days, and what has been going on uh, here, or, or what was going on during the Boston Tea Party. The first contrast is the context in which these events take place. So that's really important, what led up to the riots and what led up to the Boston Tea Party and, and are the Boston Tea Party and these riots the same because property was destroyed. So let's look at the contrast. First of all, a completely different situation. Patriots had been trying for over 25 long years to address the government. They, they've gone back and forth. And remember, this is a time where you couldn't just shoot them an email. They had to send letters, which would take months to deliver and then take months to get a response. And so this was a long, tedious process that the Patriots in America and in the colonies had been really over the course of about 20 to 25 years with the different things that have been taking place. They've been trying to get their rights as citizens, which, by the way, were guaranteed to them, not in the form of a constitution, but their rights as British citizens not just the rights that they gained after establishing the Constitution many years later, they were asking for the rights that were already guaranteed to them by England's law that they were being denied. And so what they did was, over the course of those 25 years, they, they constantly tried to get all of their rights uh, allowed and, and to get a representation in Parliament to no avail. And they tried over and over and over again. They had tried every peaceful means that they could think of. Still got nothing. Still, England continued to pass laws that were tyrannical over them, that took away their personal rights, rights to property, rights to privacy, so on and so forth. And after 25 long years, it culminated in uh, the Boston Massacre and the Boston Tea Party and a, a few other events, and then eventually Lexington and Concord and the Revolutionary War. So... That's one thing that's really, really different. The George Floyd thing, th that happened just a few days before the riots started to break out. In the Patriots case, it had happened over the course of roughly 25 years. The second part here is that they had no representation to create the change that they wanted. Unlike the citizens of the various cities that have seen riots, Birmingham, Dallas, uh, Minneapolis, uh, LA's had several big ones over and over again. The difference here is that regardless of whether you think that the system is working against you, even if you think that some of the things that the protesters and, you know, in some cases, rioters are calling for are good. Or even if you do believe that there are genuine injustices that have taken place, the difference is each of those people still get to vote. They still do have a peaceful means of transformative change, whether it's their city mayor, their elected officials in Washington, their officials at the state level. They have multiple different ways to make the changes that they want happen. The citizens in Boston were completely backed up against a wall. They had no representation in Parliament whatsoever. They could write angry letters. But that was about the extent of their power. They didn't have the ability to vote anybody out of office. They had no way to affect the laws that they were governed by. The, you also have to remember that the Townshed Acts and the Tea Act of 1773 was a part of the law, not contrary to it. 
Now, as horrible as what happened to George Floyd was, and it was, let's also remember that it is illegal that the officer of the law who was operating under the name of the law did so contrary to the law. That's the reason that he is currently being tried for third and second degree murder and manslaughter, and the other police officers that were standing there that did nothing are also being called into question and investigated. Because what happened to George Floyd was against the law. What the Boston Tea Party protesters were protesting were things that were written into the law. It was the official law of the land that the taxation without representation was going to take place. And they were protesting it despite the fact that they were being taxed, they felt unjustly. And so that was actually a part of the system they were protesting against, not something that was a outlier or an anathema to said system. Now, you also have to remember that Parliament did pass the Tea Act on April 27th, 1773. Remember that the Boston Tea Party took place on December 16th, 1773, so eight months later. And also keep in mind that what that means is they had a lot of time to think this out, to try to get the British government to stop, which they did through peaceful means, through addressing these problems, telling them that they were not going to do this, uh, all of these things. And it was only eight months later that they started doing this. With the George Floyd protest, that happened virtually overnight. George Floyd, the, the video of it released, it got picked up by the media, and literally within about, I, I think it was about 72 hours at the first protest, really started cropping up. There was a lot of time and deliberation and asking questions, okay, what are the other ways that we can do this? They looked at alternative options. They, like I said, had been trying to get their rights under the British Constitution of the time for over 25 years at this point, and so it was very pointed, very deliberate. With these, these are riots that are basically just coming out of nowhere. It's very impulsive. It's very emotional-driven. It's not something that was carefully contemplated and thought about where they observed all of the angles. So that's another really big difference in the context here. And what's really insane here is that George Floyd is going to get justice. I mean, I, I hope that he is, and he's already had the person that killed him He's already being tried, as I said, for both third-degree and second-degree murder and manslaughter. So all of those three charges are currently pending. He is lo The officer that was responsible for that has already lost his job. There's other police officers that are going to be investigated as a result of this. All of that is happening. When the Boston Tea Party happened, the Tea Act of 1773 was in effect. It was still in effect. And yes, it actually went into effect the night that the protest took place because it was passed several months earlier, eight months earlier to be exact. And then on December 16th, that was the day that it was enacted, which is the result, uh, which resulted in the Boston Tea Party. And so one really big difference here, and, and one thing that I see is very, very odd, is that everybody keeps chanting, justice for George Floyd, which I'm in favor of, but I'm also looking at it and going like, but he's, he's going to get justice. The officer that wronged him and killed him is going to face justice, which is the right thing to happen. And so one thing that's wildly different in this is that the things that the rioters are protesting is actually already coming to fruition. In the case of the Boston Tea Party, England had absolutely no interest in, nor was there any indication that they were going to either let up on the tea tax or grant them representation. Neither of those things were even close to happening when the protest took place, and so that's another big difference here. The second big contrast, when we're looking past just the context and what led up to it, the actual event itself, is that the execution in these two things, completely different, could not be more different. So the tea that was indeed destroyed in the Boston Tea Party, uh, it was obviously ruined, and there was financial damages that took place there, but there was no damage done to the ships, there was no damage done to the ports, there was no damage done to the town. Remember that the East India Trading Company owned the ships and the, the ports that they were docked in, and yet there was no damage to them. 
They specifically wanted to destroy the T because the T tax is what they were protesting. They weren't protesting ships. They weren't protesting anything else. They didn't burn down the town. They specifically were protesting the T, and because of it, it was very targeted. Destroying your local O'Reilly Auto Parts or Target because of something that a, a single police officer, and I guess the three people around him, but a police officer did, when the business owners and the people that work there have nothing to do with the injustice that took place, doesn't make any sense. And that's why in the Boston Tea Party, they specifically only targeted the things that they were, t they were protesting. They made sure to avoid any property damage to anything other than what they were specifically protesting. And it's also important to understand, too, that when you're talking about the tea that was destroyed, that was tea that was, in a roundabout way, directly owned by the British government at the time. The East India Trading Company was technically a private company. But it was a private company that was owned and sanctioned as a monopoly by the British government. This is something that a lot of people don't understand because they don't know the history of the revolution. But at the time of the revolution and when it took place, something that was really important to know is that mercantilism was common at the time. And mercantilism is basically a bunch of companies that are sanctioned and essentially run by the government. Kind of think of it in the way that AT&T was in the 1950s, where technically AT&T was private, but the government at the federal level had mandated that they're the only phone company that is allowed to operate. And so, yeah, technically they're private, but the government basically gave them the go-ahead to become a monopoly and actually works with them to continue their monopoly and establish it. That's pretty much the relationship that was going on between the East India Trading Company and the British government. And so they were essentially one entity, even though they were kind of technically different. So understanding the relationship between the company that owned the tea and the British government itself really helped shed light on the reason they did that. Now, the tea lost did result in what would have been a loss of approximately $1.7 million today. And the reason that that's important to know is what they were trying to do is basically use those losses to offset any gain that they would have made from the taxes, basically saying, if you're going to do this to us, we're going to make sure that you lose money instead of gain it. We're going to make sure that any benefit you would have from taxing us, unless this stops, is going to be done away with so that you're not profiting off of taking advantage of our rights. That specifically was the reason that they did that. It wasn't this mindless, random violence that is going on in cities across our country as a result of this. In fact, the only incidental property damage that was not the tea that was destroyed in the Boston Tea Party was a single padlock. That's it. And that padlock, by the way, was replaced by the Patriots at their expense the very next day. They broke it to get to the tea, they got rid of the tea, and then they replaced the padlock the next day. That's how careful they were to ensure that no incidental property damage took place, that they were not there to create some kind of unruly riot or anything like that. They were specifically there to protest the tea party, or sorry, to protest the tea tax, and that's what they did. It was incredibly surgical in terms of what they were trying to target. And it's also important to note that there was no violence between them and the British soldiers or the Loyalists. So no redcoats were injured, no Hessians were injured, there was nobody that was just loyal to Britain that was living there in the American colony of Massachusetts. None of that happened. They didn't hurt anybody. In fact, the only person that was injured during the Boston Tea Party was a guy named uh, John Crane who was struck accidentally when they were throwing some of the tea overboard. So he did get popped in the head. So it was one of the protesters that was there protesting that accidentally got smacked in the side of the head uh, with, with one of the crates, and he's the only person that got hurt. There was no violence that took place at the Boston Tea Party, unlike the incredibly horrifying footage that we've seen here recently of these riots, where random people like that guy in Dallas that was basically stoned to death, even though he, he did survive, but he's in, was in intensive care in the hospital. We saw the 70-year-old 
a black police officer get murdered the other day, and there was video footage of that as well. Uh, there have been lots of people injured and hurt by this, and, and sometimes people that were actually in the protest, sometimes peaceful protesters, sometimes people that were just standing around in the wrong place at the wrong time. Random acts of violence. I was watching a video just the other night of protesters just run up to an old man and just smack him in the face for no apparent reason. And so this is something that stands in stark contrast to them as well. And it's also important to remember that they didn't steal the tea. They destroyed the tea because they wanted the damages to be felt, but they didn't take it. They didn't take it for themselves. They weren't getting anything. They weren't gaining anything out of it. It's not like with you saw the Nike store where a bunch of rioters cleaned that out. It's not like that Target where you saw people walking out of theirs with TVs and different items. The Boston Tea Party patriots, the Sons of Liberty, they didn't steal anything. And in fact, they specifically didn't want to steal anything because they didn't want it to be understood that what they were doing was motivated out of greed or some kind of self-interest. They wanted to send a message, hey, this is wrong and we want to make clear that it's wrong, but we don't want to profit off of it or make it seem as though that we're getting something out of it because that would taint the message that we're doing this for a reason other than the fact that our liberties are being abridged. And so that was wildly different than what we've seen the past few days. And another thing, too, the Sons of Liberty were both organized and had a unified message. They all knew what they believed. They knew why the other people were there. I'm sure that they didn't agree on absolutely everything, but they did agree on these fundamental truths and the same. You see some of the protesters out there today, and there are some people that are peaceful, good, decent people that I think are misguided and misinformed, but ultimately are good folks that I wouldn't mind having a conversation with. There are also people out there that are extremely militant, anti-capitalist. Army Hammer did an excellent expose talking to some of the protesters saying that we should basically burn down America, restart the whole thing. People saying that we should go out and kill all the cops. I, I mean, just horrible, evil things. And so the difference here is the Sons of Liberty, they all knew why they were there. They had a unified message. They were very organized, very precise, and had all of this stuff planned out. Here's the third contrast. The third contrast is the desired result was completely different. And partly, partly admittedly, that is because it seems like who, what the intended desire is depends on who you ask in the riots that we've seen over the past few days, but that was not the case with the Sons of Liberty. The Sons of Liberty wanted either reconciliation with Britain, and that was a viable option. They said that over and over again, that they were fine with remaining British citizens as long as Britain decided to extend the rights that they had justly, uh, that they had justly been given by God. As long as Britain understood that and respected that and changed their behavior, they were perfectly fine with reconciliation and remaining British citizens. But they were also fine with making sure that they secured those rights themselves if England refused to do so. And we know eventually that is, of course, what did happen. But we don't see any clear-cut messaging like that from the rioters. When it comes to the rioters, you have people like Antifa and Black Lives Matter, or at least the leadership of Black Lives Matter. I want to be very clear on that. I think there's a lot of, as I just said, rank and file people that are actually probably good, decent people that are just misinformed. But when it comes to the leadership of Black Lives Matter, they are violent radicals. There's a reason that on the corporate level, at the leadership level, Black Lives Matter has not denounced the riots. There's a reason that Antifa is out there instigating the riots. And so the people that are involved in this, wildly different, want a violent socialist revolution and overthrow of the American system. That's completely different than what the Sons of Liberty wanted. Now, they did engage in a violent overthrow of the British government, but they weren't anarchists. That's the reason that the American Revolution was so radically different than every other revolution in human history. One of the reasons that their revolution worked and stuck is because they already had people ready to govern from day one. They didn't want anarchy. They didn't want to burn everything down. What they wanted was to have the leadership that they had chosen, their local governors, their local sheriffs, their local mayors, that were already living in the American colonies with them, 
to be allowed to have more jurisdiction and, and more ability to protect the citizens' rights than they were currently be, been given. They didn't want to be ruled by a tyrant that had no interest in what they thought from 3,000 miles away. That's the difference. And that's the reason our revolution worked. We already had government structures in place. We didn't want anarchy. We didn't want there to be no police. We didn't want there to be no system. By the way, the latest hashtag from Black Lives Matter is hashtag defund the police. They want anarchy. They want to burn the system down. The Sons of Liberty wanted the system that was already in place in the form of their local government to be given more power and the British government to abdicate its power if it refused to give them representation. That's the difference in the two. The desired result was completely different in these two scenarios. So that's it. They're different in historical context and what was going on and what led up to them. They're different in the actual execution and what happened during the protest. And in, the, in one case, the riot. You certainly couldn't call what happened at the Boston Tea Party a riot. And then third and finally, they were different in what they wanted. And so really, I think it's laughable that they're comparing these two things as though they are the same. Anybody comparing these unruly, uh, unruly anarchistic riots that are going on in cities across America is either completely ignorant of what is going on during these riots or completely ignorant of history, or sadly, I think this is probably true in most cases, both. Anyone that is saying that these are the same thing or could even be realistically compared, they just don't know what they're talking about. Studies show that YouTube videos featuring attractive women get far more likes and subscriptions than ones that don't. This is especially true if she's exotic looking. Luckily, in the modern era, there's an easy way to work around this. You see, I identify as a very attractive Hispanic woman, so now you have to like this video and subscribe to my channel. Otherwise, you're just an evil, heartless Nazi that hates brave, liberated, beautiful Latina women like me. Checkmate, woke brigade.